How about we start? What do you know? To spell Dune, you go D U N E. Wow, that's not a lot to go off of. Do you know what Dune means? It was a book. It's referring to the desert in which the story takes place, um, where there's lots of spices, apparently. And there's some white kid that saves everyone. And Zendaya is going to be in the movie, so that's cool. Her and I, her and I could be like cousins, just like in the way that we look. And somewhat how you act too, yeah. <laughs> Timothée Chalamet, his um, his name rhymes. There you go. If you do the uh, French pronunciation. It's also it's also one of the first sci-fi's that got popular. There you go. It was hard science fiction. The fir- one of the first hard science fictions that hard that took flight. I thought you said it was a hard science fiction. No. Is it soft? Rather soft, yeah. It's not extremely soft science fiction, but it is soft science fiction. <sighs> We're going to get into it because Dune actually has a lot to do with Verstruct. So before we do, subscribe to this channel. Yeah, and give, give this, this video a like. I'm not going to say a lot in this video because I don't know a lot about Dune. So I'm going to say this again. Subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Give this video a like, which is really easy to do. If you are planning on seeing the Dune movie, if you know how to spell Dune, if you've ever heard of the word Dune, you should give this video a like. And um, to those who are already subscribing, thank you. It's really nice. Keep on listening. We're gonna relate Dune to Verastruct and it's gonna be super interesting. And when I say we, I mostly mean Micah, but I will probably come up with a lot of interesting things to say as well. Well, here's the thing. You know a lot about Verstruct, and so we're going to get into that. And the reason why this is so interesting is because Dune actually has a very complicated view of the environment and what the environment means and what it's capable of, which is really interesting because a lot of movies, a lot of books, first of all, don't even mention the environment. The environment isn't some character in the story. Mm-hmm. Where instead, Dune, it refers to the planet Arrakis. So the planet itself is, you could argue, is the main character That's of the cute. story. That's really cute. I it's don't know not, why I'm saying It's cute. not. Paul Atreides is the main character, but... Paul Atreides is the main character's name? Mm-hmm. Paul Atreides. Such an... It sounds like a old dictator in a sci-fi that's in Greece. Great, because that's what it's trying to sound like, yeah. Trying to sound like an old dictator set in Greece. There you go. (laughs) And uh, so let's get into it. Verestruct has a pretty simple idea of the environment. The environment is not something lesser. It, like, humanity can't subject, subjugate, I should say, or subject the environment to anything without subjugating humanity ourselves, without Mm -hmm. subjugating ourselves in the process. So this idea of, of the environment as this mirror that reflects what we do back at us is a concept that's not really talked about a whole lot. Um, and it actually flies counter to the prevailing thoughts, the prevailing politics and ideologies on the environment right now. Because the idea is that we have a responsibility and we're destroying the planet. Where instead, Verestruck would say, no, we don't have a responsibility. What we have is to protect ourselves. In order to protect ourselves, we have to protect the environment. It's not, it's not a one-for-one one situation. It's we are capable of destruction, but that destruction comes back to hurt us. Every time. Through the environment. Therefore, you don't really need to pay attention to the environment as its own individual thing. Now, Dune, surprisingly, the book, uh-huh. and more accurately, the series, 
actually agrees with this concept. It's very fascinating. So let's get into it. So what a YouTuber thing to say. Well, here's the thing is that I, I'm not going to get into all the specifics of the story because it's actually a very complicated story. It seems to be. So I'm just going to get into some of the specifics. Okay. This is set 20,000 years in the future. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be our timeline. It's not like, it's not like uh, Star Wars where it's supposed to be a different timeline, different universe. It's our universe. It's our galaxy. And it's humans as we know it. So humans... Is everybody human in it? Um, there are other creatures, but... It, They're not sentient? No, you find them in other books. So in Dune, this book, it's just humans. Boy. Homo sapiens. And um, the gal... Well, I think it's the universe. The universe is split up into houses. So you can think of it almost as like a medieval situation. There's counts and there's lords and there's barons and there's... That makes more sense. When you said houses, that really threw me off. So House Atreides currently rules the planet of Caladan at the mm -hmm. beginning of the novel. Caladan is a very vegetative planet. Vegetative, water-filled. The air is really nice to breathe. You There's plenty of water, so you don't have to carry water around with you. You can just get it wherever you want. Mm -hmm. And for the, the movie that they're making, they featured Norway as, as Caladan to kind of give that idea of maybe it's a little bit cooler as well. It's a little bit of a colder place. It's not so warm, but it's got plenty of water and plenty of life. Have we been to Norway? No. Okay. That's what I thought. So the whole idea is that they are going to be, House Atreides is going to be given a new planet. So they are no longer going to rule Caladan. They are now going to rule the planet of Arrakis. And Arrakis is just, it's just a wasteland. It's just a desert. So but wait, the reason why people want it though. It's because of the spices. It's because of the spice, one spice. Well, the spice is called melange, which in French means a mixture. <laughs> so. I want the mixture. It's called the spice. And clearly from the from the book, they process it in different ways. You can you can have it injected, you can eat it, you can swim in it. There's lots of different methods. Swim in it. Mm -hmm. so There's they're... lots of different methods of of taking in the spice. And saying the term spice makes it seem like it's it's a natural thing. But clearly it's supposed to be like a psychedelic drug. Like it's condensed. But it doesn't look like there's supposed to be any side effects. Other, other than what are considered positive ones. And one of the side effects is great foresight. It's being able to see into the future accurately. So this spice costs a lot of money and they're mining it like crazy. It costs then, a lot of money and it only, it's only found on the planet Arrakis. And Arrakis fights back. Well, let me keep talking Sorry. because the spice is required for them to travel through space so oh, quickly. They're able to bend space and time with enough of the spice. Wow. So, and no computers are allowed. So these have to be done by thinking, by essentially people who can, who are mathematicians. Okay. And it also allows them to live a long time. So the people who do the space travel typically are thousands of years old uh -huh. and they've mutated to no longer look like humans and they swim in the spice and they're able to spend uh, bend space and time to create these jumps so you can jump from place to place really quickly so the entire universe is um, you can fare it you can fare the space between planets through the spice. So if the spice doesn't flow, then the whole universe is disconnected and each planet becomes a little island. And there's only one planet that produces it and it's Arrakis. So Arrakis is actually the kingdom that people want most. 
But because it's the kingdom people want most, guess what happens? People fight over it. Yeah. So you could imagine that Arrakis, I mean, Caladan to some degree too, the first planet, the vegetative planet, they, they both represent environment. Uh -huh. But Caladan would represent more like environment that actually helps humans. And, do, and Arrakis would be considered an environment that that humans brings, want to use. Brings the greed out of has humans. Resources, yeah. Almost like an oil slash drug situation. Yeah, I, I put those in the same boat. And, um, I mean, this is going to give it away, but I mean, this book is almost... 70 years old so if you haven't read it Spoilers by alert. now well then too bad but eventually what happens is the natives of Arrakis known as the Fremen are able to take the planet back also from the universe empire there's an empire that controls all the planets and so they are able to take back the planet and they're able to make it green again, which means the spice doesn't grow oh. as much. Quick side note, there's these giant worms that crawl across the planet. Giant, oh, I saw that worms. in the preview. And they are, it's not quite sure what their purpose is. Um, many believe that they actually create the spice. So they consume the spice, but they also create the spice. We so poop without, it out. Mm -hmm. So without the worms, there would be no spice. And the worms need sand. They don't like vegetation. They don't like rock. Interesting. Yeah. So you need to work with, you need to work with the planet. But wait, okay. Uh, so does Arrakis, when it's in its dune type state, when people are mining, you know, this um, or harvesting this spice like crazy, mm -hmm. is the planet fighting back? Is the yeah, the worms, the worms will eat the, the mining machines. Okay. Yeah, they'll eat the machines. Okay. They'll consume them. The worms are much bigger than so, any machine that they can create so to mine the spice. So, Arrakis being in a, you know, in a vegetated, lush state, does that go against? The planet or is that what the planet is meant to be but people um, haven't allowed it because they want to mine the spice no what's happening is that the planet has quite a bit of water on it uh -huh. that it probably could sustain vegetation but but it doesn't happen spontaneously but it doesn't happen spontaneously because there's never a concentration so it just kind of passes through Okay. over and over again. So the Fremen for thousands of years have been collecting water mm -hmm. using their bodies, using these still suits. Uh -huh. So they're suits that preserve all the water within their body. Uh -huh. And so whenever they find sources of water, they collect it all and they put it in underground cisterns, mm -hmm. giant underground cisterns, mm -hmm. for the opportunity that they can make the planet vegetative again. But uh, here's the interesting part though. So on the one hand, if you're just looking at the one book, Dune, you're thinking, oh, this means that the environment is good and you should work with the environment to recreate a sustainable life for humans and that'll be good for everybody. Right. It, it might make it so that these, these highly physical, highly... humanist processes mm -hmm. might be limited mm -hmm. and might not be able to function as they were before right so it does seem like a against you know the spacefaring operation right and against the empire or the or the universal to use use a more global term universal government. Glo globalist yeah yeah mm. so so you could say that but if you read the other books, you start realizing, no, the Fremen start going on a jihad and start killing everyone in the entire universe. What does a jihad mean? It means they have this religious belief that they have to subjugate the entire universe. 
Okay. So basically, they create a new empire where the Fremen are the empire, not the other people. Okay. And the Fremen is where... Are the natives of Arrakis. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I'm aware of that. However... And so that's supposed to be a, a reference to Nazism. Oh. But also a reference to... The natives of Arrakis. Okay. I thought, I thought they were the good guys. Um, in the book they are, but in the series they are not. They're the bad guys in the series. Confusing. So Paul Atreides has to live with the fact that he freed Arrakis from colonists, for lack of a better word, but was not able to prevent them from becoming colonists, preventing the natives from becoming colonists, and then taking over the entire universe once again killing a lot of people in the process. There's always going to be someone. Well, that's the point that that Frank Herbert is trying to make. And I think it's very fascinating because on the one hand, Verestruck says, okay, we need to work with the Earth. But you are not better for working with the Earth. That runs into Nazi territory. So there's this, there's this theory, and I'm trying to remember, I think it's Hegel. It's not Heidegger. Or is it Heidegger and not Hegel? I forget. One created the dialectic, and that's not the guy I'm talking about. He's a proto-Marxist. I'm not talking about him. The other guy, I think it is Heidegger, he is a Nazi theorist, Mm -hmm. and he came up with the theory of Bluten and Boden, which means blood and soil. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that if a race or a nationality creates creates a connection between Mm -hmm. their blood, between Mm -hmm. their race, and the land that they're living on, Mm -hmm. then they are a superior race. Ooh. That's a problem. Right. So saying, saying on the one hand, humans are better off when we work with the environment, it's important then to say right afterwards, but that doesn't make you superior. Doesn't make a single person superior. And that's why it's important that we talk about natural consequences so often, because that is the key. That's what separates the whole thing. It makes it clear what you should be doing, but doesn't make you better for doing it. You already get the blessings or the positive consequences for doing that thing. Right. Mm, It's all about natural consequences. I love that. Um, Something that... This is a very controversial thing to bring up, but I haven't talked a lot, might as well. So there are um, some reports of people, not this isn't on the news, but people are saying that they are finding that a lot of the fires that are happening on the West Coast are being made by um, extremist arsons who want to bring awareness to climate change. Mm -hmm. So it's not actually climate change that is creating these fires. It is people who want to bring awareness to climate change. Well, it can be both at the same time. It could be. The point is, is that... But But that doesn't even need to be true to be for the fact that there are people who are using the changes in environment Mm -hmm. for government reasons. For saying you are superior if you promote policies and politics that give the illusion of helping the environment. Right. My point, just really quick, is the idea of an artificial consequence. And, right. And I'm saying, I'm saying you don't need to talk about arsonists, the possibility of there being arsonists. There are people, however, who do want to create policies in government yeah. because of the environment and think they're superior for it. Mm-hmm. That's an artificial consequence, and that's for sure. We don't need to talk about if there are arsons. We can just say it doesn't matter whether there are arsons or not. The fires are being used as a political tool as a vehicle, yeah. to promote the superiority of the environment or rather that you work with the environment. 
it's not the personal blessings you get for working for the envi- with the environment in your own personal space. Mm-hmm. No, it's the superiority of a of a nation or of policies that that help the environment nationally, even while forcing others who disagree to follow along. Do you get what I'm saying? Of course. So you wanted to talk about artificial consequences, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that is super intriguing. Oh, you don't want to talk about artificial consequences? I guess I'm all done. You said it for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I don't like talking about speculation because speculation isn't helpful. So let's talk about realities. There are already people. You don't need to talk about if. You can talk about absolutely. There are definitely people who honestly act as if they're not Nazis, but they're literally doing Nazi doctrine. Mm. Now, Nazi doctrine is if you work with the earth, you are superior. That's so intriguing because you just, that's one of those doctrines that you just don't see how it played out in, or how it was in practice during World War II. It's super clear. The Germans use their land more productively in their eyes Mm -hmm. than any other nation around them. No, I know. I'm just saying it wasn't obvious. Which included people who spoke German but weren't using the land as efficiently. And so they were allowed to go and take it over those lands. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then you had Jews living in their borders. And those Jews made it clear that their land of choice was not the land that they were sweating and and working it was israel in the middle east it wasn't where they were it was a place that they were looking to be they they're never they're never wanting to be where they're at that and so that makes them a lesser race and species for that reason yeah that's sad huh because that's simply not true all people are created equal huh You want to see mama? Oh, come here, Zori, Zori. So Verestruck holds this this very interesting perspective that I think is the same in Dune, is that the environment does have power. Mm -hmm. Those who use that power for their own ends, doesn't matter what ends you're looking to use, that's incorrect. So even if you're the natives, of that land of that planet (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you're trying to take that planet back that's still incorrect if you're using the power of the environment you need to be willing to have the positive benefits be those of you having a vegetative planet now and just enjoying that enjoying the fact that you have your planet back and it's vegetated so you can live your life in peace and not go and conquer the universe now that you have this power. Now That's that you so have control of the spice, complete control of the spice, you go and take over the universe. It's no. like, and, that's and, not right. And just quickly, right back to what we were saying, you were saying about you know German Nazis um, in World War II, is that my point was that they do, that it's very conveniently not brought up it's not common knowledge that that's why they were taking over these correct. countries. That's the point that's I'm correct. making. Is that in my history Amer- class, it was they wanted power over these lands, so they mm-hmm. took them. And of course, that is what it was, but it's also the way that they justified it. Is is compelling. Yeah. It's scary because it is compelling. Yeah. You go, wait, that's actually, for some reason, that makes sense. Yeah. It really does. Well, you go, oh, that makes sense. And it's like... That's why it's so scary, because now we have, honestly, here in the United States of America, we have both parties promoting this narrative. Mm -hmm. That, oh, no, the environment is a power to be used. And even if Republicans are saying, no, we shouldn't use that power, Mm -hmm. they're still suggesting that that's, that's the tool. It's a tool to be used, which is incorrect. The environment reflects back what we give to it. Every time. Every time. 
So if you want to, you want to have a good time, you want the environment to work for you, work for the environment. It's a mirror. You show kindness to the environment, it shows kindness to you back. And, it, and it's infinitely scalable. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. show kindness to one plant, that plant immediately shows kindness back to you. Mm-hmm. 10 plants, same thing. Your whole yard, same thing. The concept scales fantastically. Right. And so you, it doesn't require you having control of an entire nation for you to be able to have a good time with the environment, to have the environment work for you. Mm-hmm. You can do it at any level. And that's, that's the lie that's propagated by um, practically all the politics on the planet. Gosh. And that's the same thing that Frank Herbert is worried about in the Dune series. Really? He, yes. He makes it fun. To, how, else, how else would you describe that? Mm-hmm. He says, oh, here are the good guys. Next book, they're the bad guys. Or rather, at the end of that book, they're the bad guys already. Paul Atreides has a vision of the future because of the spice. He has this foresight and he realizes, oh no, they're going to kill trillions of people oh, gosh. to take over the universe. These, these guys that I'm leading. That he just, he's leading and that he just saved. Mm-hmm. And he's thinking, oh, we're done now. And nope, he sees a vision of the future. He is incapable of changing the fate, even though he's technically the Messiah. He can he can yell all day, every day, saying what you're doing is wrong. But they will go and they will kill trillions of people throughout the universe and create a new empire. Well, I'm sure the founding fathers in America they made the Declaration of Independence. Mm Mm-hmm. They made the Constitution, and they're Great like, point. won the war, mm-hmm. we're done. We're done. We did it. And then George Washington made it clear. He made it very clear. He said basically only two things that he hoped America would continue to do. Mm-hmm. One is that they would have term limits. How many, how many um, times a president can stay president? Mm-hmm. Two times. He didn't make it into law, but he basically said, this is what I, you know, this is what I give to you. This is my gift. And then the other gift he said is stay out of foreign affairs. Stay out of them. Why? Because he knew that eventually we would be the most powerful country on the planet and that it would be so easy to get involved in foreign affairs and win and be able to take over land to become this empire that we are now. And now we're in this position where it's like, why couldn't we keep our hands to ourselves and just have a good time here? We wouldn't have nearly as many problems here at home domestically if we had stayed out of foreign affairs. You know, if we had just been okay with having a vegetative planet when once it was a desert and we can still use the spice we can still sell it off to people and have kind of control over the world in that way Uh but not direct control of the world not direct control of the universe does that make sense totally just that we are trying to have the best existence we can where we're at why can't we just live with that right why does it always have to be oh we have the best nation in the world well we better go conquer some other ones I know. Why is that always the thing? United States of America is no different in that regard. And China is doing the same thing now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We just end up with this situation where why can't you just get to a state and then just better yourself? Have a better situation with your environment, with your immediate space, the land in your nation. Why do you have to go and conquer? And we know why because the model, the economic, industrial model that we use is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. It crashes. And the only way to prevent it from crashing is to start a new fight. That's how it works. And I don't just mean like fight as in like military. I mean, that can include a fight included like in even a civil rights fight, even a legislative fight, even a democratic fight that can be included in that. But you have Mm -hmm. to fight. It's not, it's not something that continues to climb. It's not like GDP just keeps going up, 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 up. 
and it goes up forever. No, eventually it'll crash or you have to learn to fight for it from time to time. Start a new fight. Right. And that usually includes conquering some other countries in some fashion. That's so interesting. And that's a problem. Yes, it is. It's a huge problem. I couldn't agree more. I'm excited to see Dune. Um, I think we should maybe after it comes out, or if I do get around to reading the book before it comes out, we should make another video about sure. some more insights around it. Because I can tell based on what you, you're saying that there is a lot to say about Varys Drucked with it. Yeah, there really is. Because most books, most, even our current politics, are very at odds with, oh. with Varys Drucked's understanding of the environment. So just to recap. Sure. Verestruck says, and this is very much the same in Dune, the environment is a mirror. Uh -huh. it, it has a power of its own, but that power is the same as ours. If we're destructive, it's destructive. Right? Right. You create a desert planet, well, it creates a spice that continues to create this horrible empire that has a lot of infighting. Mm -hmm. And where people turn into monsters and all kinds of crazy stuff but if you choose to work with the planet and then release all this water even a desert planet can turn into this wonderful lush place but you have to be willing to keep it because that in itself has a power as well right and it can be used as a weapon just as easily easily as it can be used as a food and as mm -hmm. sustenance, it mm -hmm. could be used as a weapon. For sure. And so, and that... Oh, that's such a good, that's such a good point. And that's the same, and that's literally the dogma and the doctrine of Nazi Germany. Wow. It's this idea of... of Using the earth as a weapon. Well, rather that if you work with the earth, then you are superior. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a weapon. Yeah. It's not a weapon immediately. It's that idea that makes it a weapon. Because if you just work with the earth and you're content with whatever the earth does back, whatever the environment does back to you, uh -huh. that's not a weapon. That's just sustenance. That's, uh, I'm really loving the word cultivate right now. So that's sure. cultivation. That's cultivating the human, that's cultivating the earth right mm -hmm. there's no weapon involved there it's only and it's not even like it's not even like a gdp increase mm -hmm. even though that might be involved right economic wealth right no it's cultivation it's life becomes richer and more beautiful and food becomes tastier water becomes cleaner air becomes nicer you, you just feel more warm and full of life, right? right? That's what cultivation is. So, for instance, this changes perspective on immigration. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with immigration. And immigrants can do whatever they want because in the end, if they help the land, the land becomes better. If they hurt the land, we'll make sure that immigrants or any individual, all citizens of the world, uh -huh. have an extent to how much damage they can do. Right. So if they live on their property and they want to just completely obliterate their property, they uh -huh. can do so. Uh-huh. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they'll get the consequences of that. They'll live in a pit. There you go. In a nasty pit. There you go. But right now we're at the point where I need to say very clearly that we're moving towards a desert planet. We're not moving towards a more vegetative planet. We are moving more towards a desert planet. We're all acting like, like everywhere else except for where we live can be a pit. <laughs> and then we'll try okay to make where we live to be fine. A minimal garden so with some grass and a few trees. Oh, grass. Instead of taking this opportunity to go, no, I'm responsible for everything within my purview. Every piece, every dollar that I spend is, is telling, you know, the people who produce that food, produce that foam, produce that whatever, what I think about the environment. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And so we need to be spending our money more wisely. We need to be making sure our land and the places that we live, if you rent, your apartment is a very lush garden. It is a jungle. It is a place of life and of good air and of plants. There you go. That's important. And, and we're... So right now we're moving towards Arrakis and we're still acting like we can be destructive. And then there's people who are saying, no, we need to take care of the environment and we need to use this opportunity to gain power because you are superior when you care about the environment. That's literally what they tell people. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're disgusting if you don't like the environment. No, you're not disgusting if you don't like the environment. You already have your negative consequences. You're not disgusting or evil or anything. You are just human. You're a human Why being. would I be mad at you? You already get you're your consequences. You're a human being receiving consequences just like any other human being. So why would I ever be mad about that? Why would you be considered inferior for that? That doesn't make any sense. Right. You're a human making choices. Those happen to be the choices that you're making. Right. So yeah, I think, um, I think Dune presents this wonderful, wonderful perspective on the environment. And well, I hope that comes through in the movie. I hope so, too. Because I can imagine people misinterpreting I it like so. people commonly I love th- to do. I think so. They might misinterpret it. And so it's important. And it sounds like Denis Villeneuve, who's the director of the movie, mm-hmm. he, it sounds like he's very interested in taking on the perspective of, of, of many millennials and uh, Ooh. Zoomers. I think that's what they're called, Zoomers. Gen Z. So Gen Y and Gen Z. In that, yes, they are looking to use the environment as a Gen Z is weapon. calling themselves Zoomers now? Yeah. yeah. It's a little strange. Go on. Anyway, so I am worried that they are going to take the perspective of, no, we need, to, we need to make the government do things for us instead of do stuff for ourselves. So may, may, let me make this clear. Okay. Barristruct is about personal responsibility. Dune, Dune is about make the world around you a good place to live and don't go further. You are not allowed to control other people or attack other people or think you're superior to other people just because you live in a lush place. Just because you've been able to create life where you're at. And Barristruct thinks the same way. So that's it. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, if you like this perspective of what the environment is and what it does, please consider subscribing. Like this video. Check out our other videos too. We have a lot of stuff on the environment. Verstruct is all about natural living. It's about this perspective of the environment and how you can live in this world. Be self-reliant. And have a good time. Yeah. And uh, you, are, you are a deep fountain of unique identity, Vera Structure. Have a lovely day.